Uh, I will try to very briefly uh, explain the situation of uh, language training for displaced migrants in Cyprus. Uh, you might end up having some questions, but uh, I'll be here at the end of the presentation. Uh, one of the main challenges that we have identified through this research um, it was that the fact that language training is provided sporadically uh, and on short-term term project basis uh, from projects that are mainly funded by the European Union. So as you could guess, this creates difficulties on the one hand for displaced migrants to consistently develop their linguistic capacities because you might, for example, uh, reach only stage B and then the project ends, so you can't develop further. Uh, and also, it creates a lot of challenges to the organizations that provide these kind of trainings because the project ends and then the funding ends and then the project ends as well. Um, so one of our main recommendations was to include language training uh, as part of the National Action Plan, you'll be surprised to know that we don't, at the moment we don't have a National Action Plan on integration, so that was one of our main uh, recommendations. But we will have soon. Uh, to, to sort of more practical uh, suggestions was to use the premises of, the existing premises of primary schools in Cyprus. Um, as you know, um, to, to use these premises to provide language training so as to ensure a reach, um, to, to ensure a wider geographical reach. Um, mainly because one of the criticisms that we have identified is the fact that language training is provided only in, uh, in the big cities. Uh, also, uh, we, ha we, we, we suggest that the national and, and that the national and European uh, funds for integration should follow a holistic approach in order to serve a wider integration policy. In other words, we suggest to use the existing funds in a more organized uh, way so as to avoid duplication in the actions. Uh, also, we have identified uh, that language training policies sometimes are gender blind, which means that they fail to, to meet the specific needs, uh, especially uh, of women. Um, we suggest that gender mainstreaming of language training policies, which practically means uh, a research to identify the different needs of women and men displaced migrants, and to address those needs through collaborations among policymakers, uh, mig um, migrants and migrant women organizations, um, informal groups that can better inform the policies. Because we, we have identified that sometimes policies are uh, developed for migrant women without including their voices, which is very important. And third, uh, there was a lack of consideration of education background and this led to inequalities because, for example, you could have uh, a class with uh, university graduates and people who haven't graduated the primary school. Uh, and stakeholders uh, said that this um, created a lot of difficulties, so we suggest to tailor the classes to the educational background of participants, uh, which means that this requires, of course, a prior, a prior evaluation or segmentation of students according to competence. And also, um, we suggest that the design of teaching methods that are adjusted to the needs of adults and, and the literacy level. Because sometimes it's very difficult if you are an adult to sit in a class. Um, so stakeholders confirmed that the more flexible way of teaching uh, learning in, in applied situations, such as going to a shop and then use the survival Greek um, and, ne and needs-based learning produced better results. And just, just in case you're not familiar with the language, in Cyprus we have a, a, a Greek dialect. So this is particularly important because it's, not, it's an oral uh, dialect. So this is why it's again important to learn by doing because this is a way to learn the dialect. Thank you very much.